Do you see me? Yes. Okay. I have the honor to present the influence of Hippocrates on germ medicine. And I'm going to do it in three different aspects. First, I want to talk about the development of the Hippocrates Oath to the pledge of today, to the pledge used in Germany today by the medical chambers. And then I want to talk about the influence of the Hippocratic Corpus on germ medicine today. And last but not least, a very sad, a very dark chapter of our history, the Nuremberg doctor's trial, who was very much influenced by Hippocrates and the oath. So I want to explain that all German physicians, all and every, every German physician is a member of medical chambers. There are 17 chambers which are organized by regions. And the medical chambers regulate the conduct of physicians. And the basis of the code of conduct by the physicians is called Berufsordnung, which means uh, role of conduct. For all physicians of my region, for example, I'm going to show you. And the beginning of all these uh, Berufsordnung, all these codes of conduct are the modern version, the German modern version of the oath of the hypocrisies. As you can say, as you can see, it is a modern, modernized version of the solemn, of the old oath. And I'm going to point out some highlights uh, from the pledge of former times and from the pledge today. So as a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge my life in the service of humanity. The health and the well-being of my patient will be my primary concern. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient. I will maintain the highest respect for human life. I will not permit considerations of age, illness or disability, faith, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social status, or any other consideration prevent me from fulfilling my duties to my patient. I will keep the secrets entrusted to me even after the death of the patient. I will perform my profession to the best of my knowledge and belief with dignity and in accordance with good medical practice. I will promote the honor and noble traditions of the medical profession. I will be loyal to my teachers, my colleagues, and my students, and show the respect and gratitude due to them. I will use my medical knowledge for the benefit of the patient and for the improvement of health care. I will take care of my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide the highest level of care. I will never, even under threat, use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties. I do so solemnly of my own free will and on my honor. You see, this is very much a modernized version of Hippocrates' of Hippocrates Oath. And uh, this all started in Germany uh, in the early 1800s. First general proclamation of Oath of Hippocrates by all students, all becoming doctors, was done in Montpellier in France. But this spread very fast to Germany, and it was a widespread custom in the first half of German of, uh, of 19th century to uh, swear this oath in Latin. This declined in the second half of the 19th century due to a shift in medicine. Shift, medicine became a science at that time and the art was less important. So there was a decline in using the oath. Well, after, first, after the First World War, there was a big disillusion uh, due to the fact that science is not all in medicine. And there was a real big return to the ideals of Hippocrates. Well, in the 20s, in the 1920s, Hippocrates was a name for a, for a holistic medicine approach, which was quite popular, which referred to the ideals and to the methods and treatments prescribed by Hippocrates and his, and his two pupils. 
Then there was a very dark area, era in, in German history, the Nazi dictatorship from 1933 to 1945. And the Nazis, they abused the oath. They changed it in such a way that the health of the nation was much more important, was the only important thing, not the health of the individual. And this led to many bad things I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Well, after the Second World War, we had to reform our German system of, of doctors' pledges, of doctors' uh, rules. And after having done this, we were reaccepted to the World Medical Association in 1950, five years after the end of World War II. Since then, there has been a continuing discussion of the pledge in Germany, and uh, there were several rewordings for modernizing the old text, but the core is still the same. The major discussions are today the discussion on abortion, which is not legal officially, but it is permitted. So this is really a, well, a peculiar situation, but that is a pragmatic approach to this very hot topic of ethics. Then the second big ethic issue is of euthanasia and active euthanasia is illegal, but what is called passive uh, euthanasia is legal. That means you let the patient die, you let nature takes, uh, let nature takes her or his cause. And then there's another topic now under discussion, the, the topic of assisted suicide. And there is a new ruling of the Supreme Court pending allowing assisted suicide, but there are strong resentments with doctors and other people against this ruling. So this is still under hot discussion. And all these developments led to the statement, I will maintain the highest respect for human life. I just showed you in the pledge of 2019. Why is that so? Uh, the very bad, the cruel experience of Nazi dictatorship explains this strong pro-life thinking in medical circles in the chambers, who are the representatives of the doctors. But at the same time, there's a growing influence of liberal uh, Western countries in public and media. You see, our neighboring party is, our neighboring country is, is uh, Holland, the Netherlands, and they have liberalized uh, assisted suicide and even active anesthesia and, and, and euthanasia uh, 25 years ago. And so this is a dis big discussion going on in Germany too. Well, I'm going to take some uh, statements from the textus, textus of the Hippocratic Corpus to explain what is valid still today. You all know these uh, sentences about the main, um, the main aim of the art is to prove that medicine is an art to silence those degrading it. You know all, all about the technique discourse and you know that arts are, teach, arts are teachable and learnable and oral instruction was followed by text. This is all pure Hippocrates and his uh, pupils and his students. And... Uh, there is now a present discussion whether medicine is an art or a science going on in Germany. And uh, it's the discussion of science versus humanities. And uh, to answer this question, to, answer, to improve the relationship between doctors and patient, medical education is now strengthening the doctor-patient relationship. So you see that these discourses, this, these discussions are quite old and still quite new. Nothing really changed. Nothing, most things stay stable in this respect. Well, what did Hippocrates, Hippocrates say or his pupils uh, about the physician? 
the physician, the dignity of a physician requires that he should look healthy. This is uh, quite true, and this is even reflected in the new pledge, as I showed you just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, otherwise, you cannot act as a qualified physician, and everybody knows that somebody who is not fit, fit in his physic cannot operate or cannot treat properly. So the ideal of nobility of a well-regulated lifestyle and just character is valid for all times. This concludes in, I will take care of my own health, well-being and abilities in order to provide the highest level of care. That's our pledge of 2019. And this results in continuing medical education and continuing professional development and in the education of specialists, of young doctors becoming specialists for all of, the, of all known fields to treat patients. The same applies to the uh, concepts of Hippocrates uh, pertaining to decorum and precepts. This, this is all about etiquette and bedside manners for physicians, which are the same over 2,500 years. And uh, the old saying that the most important goal when exercising the medical art is to gain respect and avoid criticism is really timeless. And then the question of the physician's fee, which was addressed by Hippocrates in his corpus. And it is still relevant today because um, there is a discussion going on whether a fee is gotten from the single patient or whether you are a salaried doctor and work for a fixed income. This is a big discussion going on in this country because about half of the doctors are liberal in the true sense of the word and more than half nowadays are salaried doctors. So this is a, a big, discu big discussion still going on uh, as it was probably going on at that time too in the antique times in, Gre in Greece. Uh, the ongoing discussion on patient-doctor relationship cumulizes today, for example, in the Me Too debate and in the debate how you treat a patient of, of, the, of the opposite sex. This is a big thing going on, but I think this is a discussion going on in many and most Western countries. Well, just to give an impression what is going on and what happened uh, since Hippocrates uh, and what is happening now in Germany, I uh, show you these key points. Physicians form a family, they have apprenticeship, and now it's collegiality, and this results in physicians' pension funds, which is a means of securing the uh, old age of doctors. This is so all German doctors are members of a own pension fund, so they are sure and they are safe in old age. So this is still valid. And the same replies to the Maxim to help or at least not to do harm, which is valid for all times, I'd say. <clears throat> the Hippocratic Triangle of disease, patient and physician is forever valid. And the same applies to the intimate doctor-patient relationship of confidence and empathy. This is always valid up to now. And the saying, for where there is love of man, there's also love of the art. There is no substitute. This is still good and still well. And then a change from then to today, art has no other penalty than dishonor. Now we have a system of supervision and legislation which regulates the medical profession quite strictly. The core features remained valid and continue to exert their influence until modern times. Hippocrates represents a timeless standard for a good physician. Now, Last, not least, this dark chapter of germ medicine 
in the time between 1933 and 1945. Uh, doctors were accused by the American authorities in Nuremberg, which is a German city, uh, and which is also known for the big uh, Nuremberg trials with the uh, war criminals of that time. And in the second trial, uh, the doctors were accused who did experiments on innocent uh, inmates of, of prisons and concentration camps and who killed people by so-called euthanasia who were only crippled or were only of a feeble mind. So this, these were real crimes against humanity. Interesting is to note that the Hippocrates Oath was used by both sides. Uh, the American, uh, the American ju judges, and and uh, the American lawyers told everybody that uh, these people, these accused doctors from Germany, misused, abused the uh, of uh, Hippocrates Oath, but this was not accepted by the German doctors accused because they used the Hippocratic Oath to. Uh, tell everybody that they have done no harm because the health of the nation is much more important than the health of a single patient, a single person, a single human being. The country is all, the single person is nothing. This was the belief of these doctors. Well, it was difficult at that time to find a code to penalize this behavior, these misdeeds, and so the Nuremberg Code was constructed, was established by this trial, by these judges. And it is a very important document because now everybody knows that uh, medical researchers have to treat study participants as human beings with rights and dignity. This is a very important historical document. And the new principles were necessary for addressing modern conditions, but the basic principles have eternal validity and have not been altered. This was said by Ivy, who was one of the three uh, distinctive doctors who testified for the American authorities. The main point is that the introduction of moral rules centered on the participant and not on the physician. This was a major shift from strict, from old uh, Hippocratic thinking to a new approach uh, to a center ring on the single person, the single human being. Well, now, now I can conclude my short lecture on Germany, not without thanking uh, Professor Karl-Heinz Leven in Erlangen and Professor Heiner Fengeru in Düsseldorf for their help and advice. Thank you so much. We would like to thank you also, Dr. Melchus, for this fabulous talk. Uh, not only you connected the Hippocratic Oath with uh, the, the evolution of medical, uh, of medicine in Germany, but you also you brought up some uh, moral issues the current ethical issues like abortion, uh, assisted suicide, euthanasia, and how can be influenced by Hippocratic Oath. And very interesting also the connection that you made and gave to, you, to us about the influence of Hippocratic Oath from both parties during the Nürnberg trial, doctor's trial. So very, very interesting uh, presentation. We thank you very much, Dr.